Hey everyone, welcome to Open. I'm Rina Valentin, your host of Café con Leche for the next hour, inviting you to get social with us online. That is, tweet us and follow us on Instagram at Broxnet TV and like us on Facebook at Open Broxnet Television. And of course, while you're there, follow me on Twitter, FB, Instagram, Insta Stories, and LinkedIn at Rina Valentin. Our first guest is a career coach, a TV contributor, and former Reuters TV anchor who uses her 15 plus years of experience to train, coach, strategize, and help people boost job performances, excel in their careers, and find their voices as a leader. She joins us today to give us tips on how to make 2022 our best year ever. Please welcome to the show, career coach, Elizabeth Corrupta. Hello and welcome. Hello, Rena. I'm so excited to be here today with you. What I forgot to mention in your introduction is that you are also a BronxNet alum. I am. I was a BronxNet reporter, very proud and had the most wonderful experience with you all at BronxNet. Well, welcome back, or should we say welcome back home, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Your travels uh, abroad uh, <laughs> in, in experience as well as uh, uh, explorations in, in different career paths. So, I, so let's talk about this particular career path and what inspired you to head in this direction of becoming a career coach. Well, that's a great question, Rena. Um, while I was at Reuters Television, I was a television anchor, as you mentioned, and I really enjoyed it. And what I enjoyed most was when I would be connecting perhaps with somebody I was about to interview. And if I noticed that they were nervous, if they were sweating, if they were stumbling over their words, trying to encourage them and giving them advice on how to speak with confidence, how to feel confident. Um, it was so rewarding. It was so rewarding when I was able to share my tips and then actually see it come to fruition. And these people were able to appear more confident, feel more confident because years ago myself, um, I was not very confident. I was very self-doubting. So to be able to teach people um, what I've learned through the years is so rewarding. I, I get it. And, you know, it's interesting because uh, the past two years has uh, seen a, a lot of people pivot in their careers. And so, but I do want to open up with just mentioning, you know, New York has just started reopening. And um, well, just as we started reopening, we stepped into 2022 and we are set back once again to continue working remotely due to the surge in the Omicron variant. And so, what do you recommend that people do as a means of balancing out their personal life with their workflow? Well, another great question. You know, a big thing that comes to mind is boundaries. So it is challenging when you're working from home. You've got home and personal life and you've got work life all kind of entangled. And it's really important to set priorities and figure out for you what is most important for me? Am I getting burned out because I'm doing too many, too many hours because I'm having a hard time cutting things off, right? I recommend creating a time for yourself where I'm finished with work or I'm taking two hours off. And if I have to send a couple emails later or a few calls or post a few things for my business, I'll do that later. But it's really about setting priorities, making sure you're not getting burned out and really taking care of yourself. You know, um, because you're a mom, such as myself, and because of the fact that we're also being bounced around like a yo-yo, right? Uh, because at first it, it was kind of like, oh, the kids are back in person and now they're back um, in, in remote. And, and so there's that component as well. And while you're saying, yes, take time for yourself, how does one find that time? Let's say if they have a really young child. Yes, well, Again, like trying to figure out what are my priorities for me? Because as a mom, you're taking care of kids. You may have a partner. You're taking care of aging parents, perhaps other relatives. And if there's nothing left to give and there's nothing left in the gas tank, you're not going to be your best self. We all know how we feel. We might get cranky or snappy or not our best selves. And when we're not our best selves, then we just feel worse. And that is what we want to avoid. So creating a list, putting it on paper or in the notes of your phone somewhere where you can access it. What are my priorities? What do I need to do for me? 
Don't feel guilty for putting yourself first. When I say that, it doesn't mean you're just going to forget about kids and aging parents and all your other responsibilities, but it's making yourself a priority because when you make yourself a priority, that means you're going to be fulfilled and you're going to have more to give. You're going to feel like your best self instead of feeling like your worst self. Yeah, it does make a difference. And I, I've been sharing also the, that philosophy that they, of, of what they say in the airlines, right? When you're about to take off, like you have to put the oxygen tank, uh, rather the oxygen mask on yourself before you can help thy neighbor. Exactly. 100% yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's just making the time, right? That's why we're speaking to you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I, I want to also just bring up uh, your, your new podcast, the Speaking Up podcast. And um, uh, one of the uh, episodes is geared towards vision boards. And this is like a month of vision board creations. Um, can you just share with us the top three reasons vision boards should be practiced? And, and also, can you also note uh, or mention how many times a vision board should be created? Because I'm used to just creating it at the top of the year. But in your podcast, is, there seems to be like a, a seasonal practice, possibly. Yes, yes, yes. So whenever you want to make a vision board, that is the right time for you. And it's important, like a vision board helps you create the life that you want and achieve your goals. And what I say to my clients is, just like when you're creating a document of your goals, your vision board is also your goal. So if something no longer serves you on that vision board, you're going to take it off. If that glue is so stuck on there and you can't get it off, you're going to put something on top of it, right? So you always want to be editing. That vision board is not set in stone. And you can have multiple vision boards. And I don't want to overwhelm anyone. So if one is enough for you, which is enough for me, um, you go with one. But if you feel like this is something that you really enjoy, maybe it's an outlet to de-stress, you can do more than one. You can do your professional life. You could do your personal life. You could do your spiritual life. Whatever resonates for you, I say, go for it. Wonderful. And, and the benefits of the vision board is not solely just taking out the images and pasting them on, on paper. And, and it's so that you can actually be in the space or, of visualizing exactly what it is that you're um, hoping to attain as a goal or aiming towards as a, a target, right? Yes. Like you just mentioned a target. It's being able to see yourself the way you want to see yourself. You're visualizing what life can offer to you and what you can attain, that it is attainable. Sometimes when we write our goals down, they still feel far away. It still feels like you might be second guessing yourself. So that's what I love about a vision board in addition to written goals is that you can actually see yourself. You can cut your face out and put it on there and be like, might feel a little bit uncomfortable at first, but then you'll get used to seeing it so much that it becomes normal for you to see yourself in this role, in this position, um, having this success. And that's what I love about vision boarding. Yeah, plus it's fun. Now, before we go, I, I definitely want to talk about another episode. Obviously, you can hear I, I had a, a ball listening to your podcast, <laughs> which I recommend everyone uh, tune into. It's called the Speaking Up Podcast. And um, this other episode that I was listening to was how to up your side hustle, which is how we opened up with uh, everyone pivoting. And, and it seems like a lot of the guests that we have on air have shifted. And so um, I wondered if you had any top recommendations you can uh, assist someone who may be watching in, in just taking the leap. Yes, and it is. It definitely is a leap. And it can feel fearful and it can feel scary. That said, what you want to do is have a plan and strategy before you take the leap. So, you know, for example, if you're thinking of, you know, starting a new business, um, maybe it's a yoga practice, for example, you want to talk to people as many people that have a yoga practice or something similar or someone who has their own business, because people love to share what they maybe wish they could have done differently. You want to learn from other people's mistakes so you don't make the same. I'm not saying you're never going to misstep because we all do, but kind of having that knowledge and that deep research in your back pocket and then part of your strategy is going to be very helpful. Another thing I like to tell people is ask, ask for help. Ask for help. We cannot do it all on our own. And especially as women, we often feel like we can 
which I know we can. That said, <laughs> often two heads are better than one, right? And to have more information and more support while you're going through this journey is going to help you succeed again, because you're going to feel like your best self and you're going to feel prepared. Wonderful. Thank you so much, career coach Elizabeth Corazza. And uh, well, I hope you guys were tuning in and listening. She just gave us a whole bunch of ideas on how to make 2022 our best year ever. And for more on Elizabeth and how to strategize your year, please visit Elizabeth Corazza. Um, and that is with a C.com and follow her on social media at Elizabeth Corazza. All right, we got to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll hear about a one-woman show paying homage to her indigenous Afro-Latina roots. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 